visiting Las Vegas on Wednesday, October 4th, U.S. President Donald Thank Trump praised much, the bravery of really survivors of the biggest that. mass shooting in modern U.S. history, who risked their lives to help other victims as bullets rained down from a nearby hotel during Sunday night's deadly shooting spree. Depths of horror, we will always find hope in the men and women who risk their lives for ours. The mass murder that took place on Sunday night fills America's heart with grief. America is truly a nation in mourning. His trip to Las Vegas contrasted sharply with his visit to Puerto Rico just a day earlier. I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. Where he threw paper towels at survivors and downplayed the death toll there, which was nearly doubled after he left, and some estimate to be in the hundreds. Meanwhile, the island remains devastated. Over three million people remain without power. I visited the hospital earlier today where many victims are still recovering from their wounds. And we ask God to ease their suffering and to speed their healing. We pray for the recovery of the injured and those injured officers. Trump made his comments after visiting patients and speaking with doctors at University Medical Center in Las Vegas in the aftermath of the attack, which killed 58 people and wounded more than 500. But he refused to answer questions about gun control. Even though there's evidence, abundant evidence, and countless examples of tragedies showing the need to strengthen the gun laws in the United States. And even though public opinion strongly supports that, it seems as though the, the money that the gun lobby spends supporting politicians in the end trumps both the public health evidence and public opinion. The Real News' Aaron Mate recently spoke to Rebecca Peters. In the 1990s, after a mass shooting in Australia, she led the successful movement there to reform the country's gun laws. They have not had another mass shooting since. In Australia, in the 80s and 90s, we had a mass shooting about once a year. Um, and it was a similar sort of scenario to what you see in the U.S. There would be a mass shooting. There would be a lot of concern and grief and, um, and what should we do and uh, speeches and prayers and basically very little action because of a couple of things. One was this same kind of cultural attachment to guns. Australia is a pioneer country. It's a very rural country, the great attachment to hunting, uh, and, and also the rise of the gun lobby, which threatened uh, politicians that if they supported stronger gun laws, then they would turn out systematically against them. And at that moment, what happened was our prime minister, John Howard, who had just been elected. And so there's a similarity too. He had a lot of political capital still available to him. He said, this has got to stop. And basically through sheer political will, he negotiated with all the states in Australia to bring about a scheme of harmonizing the laws based on the recommendations from experts in the public health and criminology to provide a system that said, you can have guns in Australia under conditions that are, that are, that are designed where the first priority is public safety. So we had one of the, the important uh, measures that we took was a ban on semi-automatic rifles and shotguns because there really is no legitimate reason for civilians to have those, things like that. And the result of all of those things has been that gun violence in Australia has dramatically reduced that uh, and it's not only and the violence has reduced and also the work involved in policing that violence is reduced and we've as you said we've never had another mass shooting um and but we still have hunting we still have macho men in australia uh we still have you know we still do well in the shooting sports and all that kind of thing